like to continue with the idea you started last time. As you know, we're both reading books about writing by well-known writers. It's part of our research for the final chapter in our Writing Alchemy book. In our previous conversation, you read a passage from Stephen King's book called On Writing, A Memoir of the Craft. You shared how King thinks that the road to hell is paved with adverbs. Well, I found the perfect follow-on. I've been devouring Rita Mae Brown's book called Starting from Scratch, A Different Kind of Writer's Manual. Kendra, you're part of a three-cat family. I'm sure you know her Mrs. Murphy mystery series featuring Sneaky Pie Brown, her cat partner in crime detection. Yes, I'm a big fan. In fact, my Sabrina and Samantha remind me a lot of Mrs. Murphy and Pewter. I've been following the series from the beginning, and in fact, I also lived in Virginia for a time, which kind of adds to my enjoyment of the stories. Brown includes a chapter in that book that she calls Verbs, or Put the Pedal to the Metal. Let me read her beginning. Verbs blast you down the highway. If you want to get your black belt in boredom, load your sentences with variations of the verb to be. Granted, sometimes you can't help using them, especially with nonfiction, but at every opportunity, knock out is, are, was, etc., and insert something hot. You know, I really love the image of verbs blasting us down the highway. And she's so right. It's it's the difference between saying the cat is hungry and the cat howls for her supper. So much more energy. What else does Brown have to say? The whole chapter is interesting, but let me read one other part. She writes, The verb is the key to writing. You know that your sentences can be slowed down with subordinate clauses. You can drop anchor by using passive voice. You don't want to write at the same speed. You need to vary it, and the way you do that is with your verbs. My point is not that you hurdle the reader forward at every opportunity, but that you be technically aware of how verbs control the movement of your prose. It's as easy to write a peaceful, light paragraph as it is to write a torrent. You choose when and where. Don't let the verbs choose you. You know, you've really given me something new to conjure with. Don't let the verbs choose for you. You be deliberate in your choice. Do you have an example? Kendra, let me give you two sentences from Amy Tan's The Joy Luck Club. She uses strong verbs, and in this case, they're being used to convey emotions. She writes, And in my memory, I can still feel the hope that beat in me that night. I clung to this hope day after day, night after night, year after year. Now, I've rewritten those two sentences, and they no longer express the strong control over verbs. Here's the rewrite. And in my memory, I recall the hope of that night. I continue to remember this hope day after day, night after night, year after year. Amy Tom's two sentences are stronger and convey an emotional state that's missing in the rewrite. Here's the takeaway from this audio about verbs. Be in charge. Select ones that help your story and your story's mood. It isn't only about action. 